So let's start with our first speaker in this hall. Uh, this is a person with a lot of experience. He's worked with uh, huge, huge companies like Microsoft. He even presented in OpenFest Microsoft Technologies back in 2010 when they weren't working with open source at all. Let me introduce you, Donju Angyo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I hope there are going to be applause at the end as well. But uh, let's first see what, what is up to us. Just one small, tiny correction for Nick, who said he presented no open technology. Actually, it was fully open technologies, end-to-end -end presentation somewhere. If you search throughout the web, you're going to find out the presentation, and you're going to see what is it about. But at that time, I agree, Microsoft was the enemy of this open source state. At least it was considered. But uh, you're not here to speak about ancient history. Uh, what I do today, it's uh, what I actually wrote in my uh, presentation. I primarily build teams and create software from the management perspective. However, I also teach. I teach C++ for um, a company or two. And when I teach, I've been asked from the students, did we do good investment to go in the C++ world? Um, did we invest our time in the right direction? Because if you think about C++ today, does it work? No, not this one, but anyway. Today, C++ is mostly considered as a firmware uh, language where you write some cool stuff for microprocessors, where you write operating systems. It's so everywhere around, but in front of us, actually. Um, what is going on is uh, in front of us, we get much cooler, much better technologies like React, Angular, and no one even remembers MFC back then when I was uh, still a C++ developer. Just one second, let's see if I can switch this. Okay. There you go. All right. Ah, much better. Thank you. Thank you. I can even see my part of my presentation here. Good. So, <clears throat> that's it. I mean, where was I? Yeah, interfaces. And when I work with my students, we usually write stuff like that. Number of elements, five, then blah, 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 whatever. And it works with console. And it gives awful, awful uh, opinion for the people that this thing is nothing but a console. Of course, it's very powerful as a super site language. But if you consider um, writing non site stuff, yeah, well, then it's, um, you better go with Python, which is more or less bears its beginning <laughs> with C++ code somewhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, or Python or anything else, just not C++. And then I found this. It was purely by accident. And uh, when I found it, I was super excited. I was like, yeah, this is so cool library. And then my uh, son told me, well, we can use it for more than one year and, and so in university. And I was, OK, well, most probably some of you have already seen that. Have already seen the library, used it, made cool code. But then when I saw it, I thought, OK, I'm, I'm like, 40-something year olds, old uh, ex-developer who didn't know about the library, let's try and put that on the 20th edition of OpenFest. Why not? And that's what it is about. Uh, today I'm going to speak about the basics of Dear uh, I'm GUI because I think it's good more people to see it and maybe in the future when they plan to uh, do any software themselves, they might reach out for it, who knows? or not, or maybe they'll choose technology of their own comfort, but if you do C++ coding, this library is a library of, of choice if you need a graphical user interface of any, any kind. Now, the thing about this library is <clears throat> actually many things, but two most important things when, when I found it uh, for the first time. First, it's portability. It runs on many platforms. I mean, it runs practically on anything you can imagine. 
And uh, I'm going to quote uh, again a uh, quote from uh, these students in the Netherlands, which my son sen sent me examples from. Uh, these guys today, they're writing a Sony PlayStation 5 uh, framework, I think it was. Uh, and they're using their IM GUI to, to test it, to fine tune it, to see how it happens. Before that, they wrote a fully fledged game on uh, Raspberry Pi. Again, they used uh, IM GUI, dear IM GUI. So it is quite portable. When I tried it, uh, it runs on, on my uh, iOS devices. Uh, it claims it runs on Android. I, I didn't try that. Uh, I had no time to experiment that. So, but I assume the claim is right, because if it runs on iOS and Android, it will be even easier to do so. So it's extremely portable. When you write code, uh, of course, you have to consider the different screens, uh, all, all, the, all the infrastructure, the different infrastructure you're going to use. But you can do it with more or less not double effort. What is the other thing which impressed me was the immediate mode paradigm which this library uses. What does it mean? It doesn't have like Windows, uh, um, um, an application loop where you just design the interface, you shove it to the operating system, it builds up the screen and then it runs the loop and calls you at uh, when it's time for you to do something. It's actually the other way around, well, not actually the other way around, but it is, it is like this. You are the one who is responsible for the event loop. You are the one who is responsible for building up the interface. That might be good, that might be bad. Uh, good because you do everything yourself. No wonder, okay, how, how this happened, why I did this, but, but, but the system did that. Bad, well, you have to write the interface yourself. But actually, you do have to write the interface anyway, so uh, the immediate mode is not that bad from that, uh, from that angle. <coughs> And you own everything. As any C++ uh, application, you start, well, more or less from scratch. We're going to see that in the, in the demo in a while. Agui comes with a lot, a lot of already done widgets. It's a little bit clumsy. It looks more like interface from maybe 20 or 15 years ago. But it works brilliantly. It lacks a little bit touch support. Actually, it lacks a lot of touch support. But that's another, again, story. Uh, however, it gives you out of the box a lot of stuff which you can reuse and build up complex uh, uh, structures of user interface forms or everything which you can then pull out the data and use it for whatever you want. The interesting thing is that the library uh, started as a gaming only kind of thing, but today its, it's usage is, is quite vast. And uh, yeah. When I spoke about supported platforms, I pulled out this from the documentation. It's actually a screenshot. And you can see here, let me see if I will be able to point something. Uh, my pointer, there it is. A laser. Uh -huh. OK, so what we have? We have, um, of course, a lot, a lot of, uh, what is this? This is just the, the na Android native, then a lot of other uh, renderers. And then right here, actually not renderers, but platforms. And then right here, a lot of renderers. A renderer is something which displays the thing on the screen. And the other thing, the platform support, well, the, the platform support. And then it also comes with extremely cool demo application. And now it's time when I'm going to start switching the slides. So I hope that everything goes well with technology. You guys wave out if something is not so good. Because I'll show you now how the, this demo app runs on. Uh, if I can press escape, yes, I can. How this app runs on Xcode. Um, can I make this a little bit? Uh... Nah, I'm going to stick with that. Anyway, what, what I want to show is, uh, is this thing here. This is the demo app. Let's see on the platform which is going to use. So it's using a native Mac OS. Uh, so this is the app, this is the demo app, where it has all, all the widgets in one place. <laughs> great about the platform, uh, and uh, also a great place to test anything. You uh, what um, people say, people who use the library for a long time, is that this is the place to start. If you're going to start with the uh, GUI, take the demo app, learn from it, copy a lot of stuff, you know, the genius is steel. 
and then build up your own platform on, on the top of it. But that was not actually what I wanted to show you. It was this what I wanted to show you right here. It might take a little bit time to build. These errors are not very uh, encouraging, but let's give it a try. Yeah, build failed. What happened? I pressed something here. Okay, again. <coughs> build again failed. No, I'm not going to debug now. Obviously, I did uh, something and put a symbol somewhere while I was uh, doing stuff. One last try, though. No, it will be Mac OS, but it will be... No, forget it. I'll, I'll not waste your time. That's not the most important thing. Trust me, it runs. I mean, uh, <laughs> if I run it, if I succeed to make it to a successful build, it will run the iOS emulator, and maybe... No, it doesn't show it the last time. Oh, actually, here, here it is, I think. Yeah. This was built from before when it ran on the iOS simulator last night, you know, when everything was cool and dandy and working. Uh, but this is the same code, practically the same code, which runs under iOS. 100% the same code. Of course, it uses some .mm files, which is the uh, iOS... Uh, platform support, uh, and that's why I'm not using this to do all my uh, demonstrations today, but I just wanted to show you how it looks from iOS perspective. Well, let's go back to the presentation. Here we are, I hope, yeah. When I ran it on my machine, though, I was a bit uh, worried because these were the numbers I got. 14% uh, CPU usage, you just sitting there, and I was uh, wondering, okay, what, what the hell is going on? Um, but it turns out it's the immediate thingy. This message loop runs constantly, verifies everything, and so forth and so forth. This was one of the worrying parts as well, my laser pointer. Okay, can you see something? No. Uh, this thing, because it's as high, it's not that high, but it's in the, in the, in the high part, meaning that it, uh, it consumes energy. But then, if you run something like that on any tablet, because this is from the iOS, uh, from the iOS run, doesn't matter what this is here, M M1, then you would expect this thing, especially a game uh, which continuously draws with 60 FPS, to, to do some work. So it's not that bad after all. I mean, at least I found it not that bad. There is room for improvement, and if you write games, since there are tons of games out there uh, to learn from, written in uh, IMGUI, you can you can make that, but I was uh, I had to say that because it, it it impressed me not in a good way back then. And now um, it's time to to do some well demos. First demo I'm gonna start with is uh, what the okay now it doesn't work. My side slide didn't work as expected. Good. Uh -huh. Now it works. Let me make that a bit bigger. This is uh, the, the, the standard program which we write during the course. That's what I started from in, in, the, in the beginning. And then what I'm going to do, hopefully, in front of you, is I'm going to transform that program into a dear I'm GUI application. This is the program, quite uh, short. Give me a number of elements. <laughs> let's enter the elements. Let's print them out. Now, how does it look if I'd like to transform this to a graphical user application, this time with IMGUI? I have a lot of uh, help here from my uh, Git. Uh, just I need to find out where it was. So uh, this is the first, uh, as I said. If I run it, it will ask for numbers. I'm not going to do with that. One. The second is um, this check. Out. Let me see if that's the right one. Git. This guy. Uh, which, as you can see here, nothing is changed much. It's still a command line application, but I've got some stuff here. And this is part of the examples I, uh, uh, I used. I picked up one of the examples later on when I was almost ready with the presentation and wanted to show you the platforms. I saw that uh, it says on some on few um, points, this is obsolete, this is obsolete, don't use it. Well, the platform I used is OpenGL2, which is obsolete and not recommended anymore. 
And the example I used was the GLOT example, which is obsolete and not uh, recommended to use anymore. So, but it doesn't actually matter for this audience because if you're going to try something, you can pick any other platform and any other renderer which is uh, comfortable for you. And when you go to the documentation, it says, uh, it says this, is, this is the thing uh, and how you should go. The make file looks like that uh, because I can't, I failed to make Visual Studio Code work with uh, uh, its standard builder, so I had to use make file. And this is the make file of, uh, of the application. Actually, not this guy because it still says M main name. And let's see what he's going to do. Maybe my checkout is wrong, but let's see that. <coughs> so, um, and builds complete. And if I run the thing, it should run exactly as expected because it wants the number of elements and all the stuff. Still command line, no graphical user interface, but now it has the uh, dear I'm GUI linked inside, um, inside my application. If I do this, so that we can take a look how does it, uh, okay, not this LS, but more like this one. This is how it looks from library standpoint. And when I link later on the demo, you're going to see that it's going to expand a little bit. But this is how it looks with, uh, with some libraries already included. And of course, cleaned up after the linker optimizer. Let's go back for, uh, maybe I can actually do this instead, just to give you some, and uh, not switch like crazy. Uh, okay. Um, yep. This is the structure of any I'm going project, the startup structure, and how then you continue. That's the main part of the library, which is using any backend, which means renderer and, uh, and platform file. In this case, the obsolete OpenGL2 and GLOT. However, this part is the same. I mean, you just place the renderer, you get something, uh, you get something different there. And then uh, the first blood, which uh, this side was uh, dedicated to, was to show you how I'm going to integrate that. So let's see how it goes with that first block in question. And uh, it should be, yep, what I did here now, I modified my main CPP in the sense that I took, I named the class, glot stuff with a lot of static stuff, so I just created the class, shoved it, all the demo code inside there, and now this is the demonstration code which is going to bring me the um, screen with uh, default I'm GUI um, stuff. And uh, what is interesting here is uh, maybe that part, which initializes and creates the viewport and, and there's all the cool stuff. And then that part as well. Uh, where are you? This guy. Now, GLOT has a main loop in that sense. This uh, looks a little bit like uh, other operating systems, but what this main loop does actually is calling your main loop every single time. This is how the interface looks, uh, but uh, later on I'm going to show you in much neater way uh, the things. However, let's do this now and see if I'm going to be lucky enough to get to a built and running state. Again, this guy. As you can see, not much changed, despite the fact that we should have, let's see if we have, because nothing changed. But yeah, this is our application, and if I zoom in, this is how it looks. This is the stuff which I uh, just created for, uh, for uh, OpenFest. It runs in the light mode because I figured out uh, probably it would be easier for the eyes of uh, all of you. Uh, and these are all the elements which are clickable, runnable, etc., 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 with all, all the cool stuff uh, in, uh, in there. Again, this is just git checkout, make clean, make build, and you should have it on your machine, assuming that your libraries are already installed. If not, it has information how to get your libraries installed there. By libraries, I mean OpenGL, for example. So this is the first block. Let's see now. And Let's see now how does it work on And what is going to be that? We're good with timing. Great. 
what I'm going to show is something also very important, and it's called what the hell? <laughs> weird. Okay, now I don't have PowerPoint. Unbelievable. It should be already here. Ah, maybe this is the one which uh, is in uh, in uh, in a problem. Okay, no. Okay, you know what you do that? Since it's a Microsoft product, you do quit, and then you restart it. And that's okay, because we all know how things happen. Let's, fingers crossed, though, it's going to pop out, because then I'm going to be in a much different situation. Okay, so, uh, we go back here, I guess. No, uh, here, first docs extremely important people. Why it's extremely important? When I first time started with Dear I'm Gwyn, when my first code, it took half a day trying to debug a situation which put myself in, which I put myself in. They say nothing can save you five minutes of reading documentation like half day of debugging. And I did debug, did debug uh, viciously. Until I find out that, uh, well, my IDs of the graphical elements do not follow the, the, the standard they should. And then I, I read that about that in the documentation. So if you plan to start, give that a read first. Very important. So, and then uh, this is how the reworked application will look like. And in order for us to see that, uh, I also have a git check in somewhere. And this is here. Okay, this guy. This is now our application, a bit reworked. How much a bit? Well, we have, uh, uh, I objectified everything, removed everything static, static, but what the framework requires to have, and put a lot of context in it, and ended up with my uh, display function, which is all that thing uh, which you see right here is um, uh, the default stuff which is required by the platform. And then you go to your display function, in this case my display function, and it's not there. Oh, there it is. So what we have is build and start this also. <clears throat> and then our OpenFest demo looks like that. Ooh, not good. Like that. So I've got numbers, elements here. It says incorrect size because zero, you cannot have a zero. Uh, if you try to go uh, negative, you also cannot have negative. However, if you try to go positive, you can start entering your things and, uh, you know, using also plus minus and all these cool little things which make graphical user interface graphical user interface. This is just a vector which resizes uh, at need and uh, this is the demo, actually. The, the, the goal was to mimic the behavior of, of the other thing. And now, being a developer, I said, okay, let's see what's gonna happen if we do this. So far, so good. I mean, 1,000, uh, it scrolls out, creates them uh, rather quick. By the way, you can see when it's done at the moment when I can enter new stuff. So we go to 10,000. See, the cursor did hesitate for a bit if it's going to blink or not, but it started uh, blinking also. So we got 10,000. And then I'm going to go, let's see, 100,000. So you see, cursor is freezes for a second. What the hell, 100,000? And I've got 100,000. I'm not going to try 1 million. The last time it crashed badly because, uh, I mean, uh, I, I blame the operating system because it shouldn't crash that bad. Uh, but uh, it crashed badly. I, um, the system was not restarted for quite a while, and despite the fact it's not a Microsoft built underneath, uh, it still requires restart from now. So 100,000, though, handled correctly. And uh, as you can see, it, it's, it's quite good. By the way, this is already rendered stuff. So it's uh, more or less a uh, quite powerful thing. And now then I say, okay, now I have to enter 100,000 numbers. I, I decided not to, so just uh, quit, quit up at that, uh, that point. But it can handle pretty serious load. Uh, and uh, in that sense, I liked it a lot because um, it 
you, you, you have the power, you have the uh, underneath everything which C++ can give you the efficiency and power of, of building big, big things. So this is how the interface looks right now. Now, this is our main, uh, main loop, not main loop, but main building of the, um, of the window. This is our window title, elements, same line, says don't go to next line, just enter the uh, number of elements here. This is the ID which took me half day to figure out that, I'm, uh, that it's my problem, not, it, not the I'm GUIs. Actually, maybe I can show you this here. Might be easier. No, it's not easier. And then uh, this is the rest, the cycle, which builds up and shows everything on the, uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in there, in the window. So 100,000 iterations. Uh, and 100,000 elements built in like, like a second or so, I think it's, it's, it's quite good. And then the quit button, which was a big achievement because I was wondering, okay, how do I quit my application? And, and then suddenly I realized, but it's a C++ application, just say exit and that's it. And that's really how you quit your application with uh, DRM GUI. Um, what I'm forgetting to tell you, yeah. Um, what there is, there is nothing right now in the demo code which says group the elements, have a smarter scroll bar so that we have the elements on the top, the quit button, button in the middle, and then the scroll is just in the elements. I was too lazy to do it, and uh, it's in, since it's there in the demo code, just copy paste, but no, I'm not going to do that in front of you. A bit scared, something may go wrong, don't want to do that in front of people. Resize handling, uh, it's Kind of bad with resize. Uh, if you don't put uh, effort, you, that's your application. Of course, you can resize it, but then not here. Not working thingy. Uh, yeah, this is not cool. However, there are libraries already. Uh, I'm gonna see that. You're gonna see that in the uh, in the next part of the presentation, which can handle that for you. But this one, it doesn't handle it. And then the window procedure. It's not so smart right now. It just recreates the, the stuff each time when it's called. That could be smarter. Uh, creating 100,000 elements takes a second or two on, on this machine. So uh, maybe an uh, optimization idea. And that was the demo part. Now, what uh, we have next is uh, while I was researching, and you have to see that, while I was researching, OK, uh, this is a list of all the, uh, they say non-extensive because not everyone publishes uh, uh, their app that they made with IMGUI, but on the side you can see that's a list of applications. And this list of applications has stuff like World of Warcraft. Turns out, I don't know if they use that just for tooling perspective. I don't know if they have used that to build on the top of it. But I've seen the code where uh, it, it was actually the, um, uh, how we call it, the quests designer. Uh, when, when you say that this guy has to go there, this one has to say this and that and that. So the, the underlying code which helps the game developers, uh, actually the, the, that, that should be not the game developers, uh, it should be the ones who write the scenario. Um, this tooling is created using IMGUI. Then I saw something which impressed me even more. Microsoft Flight Simulator, absolutely the same thing. The tooling underneath, uh, if you just Google uh, YouTube, uh, in, in YouTube for Flight Simulator and uh, DRM GUI, you're gonna see how uh, there, are, there are videos, how we did the thing, and then you can see how they create the scenarios and, uh, and the surroundings and in DRM GUI interfaces right there. So a lot, a lot of stuff indeed, and uh, this actually gave me confidence that, okay, maybe I'm not wasting your, your time here. It's, it is something you will find interesting and uh, useful uh, by, uh, in, in the future. Let me see if, if I'm not forgetting something here. No, that, that was it for this slide. Then it came this thing. And uh, as I said, this, uh, this is uh, part of uh, Parent Sprout. This is uh, work which my son sent to me. Uh, the one thing uh, which you see where is this, this bouncing uh, um, cube, that's the Raspberry Pi stuff. This runs on, on Pi, uh, and it's the, uh, I think it's part of the, part of the game they, they did. That was part of when they tested uh, how the things look. But again, standard game 
uh, fine tuning using your I'm going. And then the other stuff on the bottom is their current work on PS5. This uh, rendering of a whole city, uh, and then uh, they control that uh, using, again, tooling uh, behind. So it's, it's kind of ugly uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, official customer representation from day one, but you can, of course, make it beautiful if you want to, and it's extremely powerful because it gives you a lot of, uh, uh, first, it gives you easy way to build uh, complex interfaces. Then I continue digging. This is one of the libraries on GitHub, and when I saw it, I said, now that should be Python, uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's quite cool uh, visualizations, uh, but I went there, it's uh, a couple of C++ files, which give you easy way to do stuff like that, with C++, again. And I was very impressed, uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's something which usually requires uh, a lot of stuff to, to invest if you need to do that kind of complex visualization, but it's already there for you. And then uh, I kept digging, and I came to that. <coughs> this thing, uh, say, okay, and <laughs> I came to that maybe uh, two days ago when I found it. Uh, this thing actually is uh, a Hello World application in, as you can see right here, again, my laser tag, tag, da, 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 da. Right here, laser pointer, this is it. One line, one lambda function call, and you've got Hello World application, which is multi-platform. You can build it for different platforms, Android, iOS, uh, Mac, uh, Windows, whatever. So, just there, you reach out, you put it there, and you start your next great app. And then, <laughs> when I was looking at one of the renderers, they look like that, by the way, I saw, hmm, what the hell is this? And when I dug a little bit, turns out that it's quite possible to have it, your code, put out on the web. How does that work, you'd say? Well, this works like that. Let me show you real quick. If I succeed to press escape again, yeah. If you go here, and please don't make me kill PowerPoint again, then you're going to see something like that. And now I realize my mouse is not with me, and maybe I'm not connected to the internet. Come on, guy. D and I, yeah. This is DRM GUI running, compiled, then transplied, or whatever the fancy word is, to uh, WASM, and running within browser. And then, as you can see, it runs uh, pretty decent. What, what it does is uh, it gives you a chance to inspect pictures, uh, to see their content, but also it gives you a lot of demo code if you want to build uh, a game in a canvas, for example, in a DRM GUI. So as you can see, the, the speed is uh, really good, and uh, uh, considering the fact that it's uh, native for the browser uh, WASM calls, the result is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, I remembered a quote by the, the guy who, um, you'd say, invented Docker, that uh, if they had the WASM back then, they wouldn't need to invent Docker. So this stuff is extremely cool for me. I mean, the, the ability to be able to build something in C++, compile it multi-platform, and eventually export it as a WASM uh, project and put it somewhere on the web. It, it's, it's, it's kind of impressive. I don't know about you, but I was uh, very happy and very impressed when I saw, when I saw this. So, uh, let me see now what, if there is anything which remains. Because we're going well, we might have even time for some questions. And um, yeah, it was excellent experience for me to prepare the presentation, to bang my head with uh, uh, open uh, uh, with the DRM GUI uh, source code to think at some points, I'll never finish that. Uh, it will be a complete and utter failure. Uh, but uh, all in all, I think I succeeded to collect uh, some interesting things to show you. And if I can go with a kind of a call to action, by the way, I'm not affiliated in any case with uh, DRM GUI. The company I work with, uh, we, if we use C++, 
then I'm doing a really bad job because I don't know where we use C++. I think we use uh, <laughs> higher, higher level um, languages to, to do our job, but if I'm going to consider a small hobby project or even maybe bigger project, I'll definitely reach out to dear Amgui. So that's my call to action to you as well. Give it a try. If you enjoy C++, I know it's hard to enjoy C++, don't get me wrong, but if you do, it's for life. So give it a try, build something, and then let's see what it, uh, what, what it happens. So now I think we have like 10 minutes, if that's correct, for some uh, yep. Q&A. Exactly. Thank you very much again for honoring my presence here. Now questions. Let's hear your applause. <laughs> okay, if someone has a question for our speaker, here is the mic at the middle of the room, so it's yours. No one dares to speak for C++. Yeah, it, it's, it's hard. The first question is always the hardest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Does this work? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, Quite, quite liking, and uh, yeah, that, that's my two cents on the yep. mm -hmm. on the thing because it's really easy to integrate in, into a in in, in tooling mm -hmm. if you use inside the company, and uh, you know technical people are using it or yep. stuff like that. But it's kind of uh, that you can you, you can maybe do some some little commercial project using it, but. The fact that it's not integrated because it's immediate mode, it, it doesn't use the uh, the styling of the operating system, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's kind of like if, if you want to be you know blending with the other applications, it's it's not that. Uh, yeah. You're absolutely yeah, right here. Uh, the first part, which the mic didn't uh, didn't work, was uh, our colleague correctly mentioned that. Uh, from internationalization perspective, translating your app, that, that would be a challenge. And maybe that's one of the reasons why DRM GUI, we don't see a lot of end-to-end -end applications built yet with uh, DRM GUI. What people end up with when they make big projects is they either stick with English, because it's there and it works, or they build up a different interface to present, like it's with the games, for example, to present the, the, the true thing to, uh, to the user. And you're, again, right. This is probably one of the reasons we don't see it, why we don't see I'm GUI, um, dear I'm GUI around yet. But uh, people work on that, and I, if you start reading docs, the first thing which you will mention, uh, in not in a so good way, will be fonts. Fonts, and especially different fonts, are a challenge. However, the demo app already shows some Chinese characters there. I didn't dare to show Cyrillic. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you try, you, you're going to make it. I think we're going to see it in the future. It, it all depends. And it's, if you go on the GitHub of the library, you're going to see that uh, it's part of the to-do list for any new contributor who'd like to go there and, uh, and see it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, j just to say that I'm not uh, like, I really like the project because it's both free and like for developers mm. like me, if, that want to do something like uh, do a demo or do a, s something of a GUI that can be integrated easily and not like bring up 70 megabytes of dependencies and yeah. trying to ship them to someone else who has who has to compile the code and so on. So that that's that's a perfect use case for that, and I'm really like. Uh, I like it a lot yep. also. Me, so. me too, and by the way, it's in my head to do something more for the end user with the DRM GUI. I don't know if I'm going to have time. You know, hobby projects, I have 
2, which ran for 15 years, still no first version out there. But uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. I mean, it's uh, it's it's all to us. I mean, the people who use C++ and uh, want to see something like that being developed in the future. Uh, hello, thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, you can uh, ignore my question since uh, I missed the uh, beginning of the presentation and uh, it might be covered. Uh, but uh, did you use Electron and how you, if you do, how you compare uh, these two in uh, context of uh, uh, Easy of usage. That's a good question, and uh, it's good because he has easy answer. Yep, I did use Electron, both as a developer to be, that one of my 10 years old project was first started as something on Electron, and as user as well, because I had to use uh, Teams on MacOS for quite a while. I hate Electron, to be honest. It's uh, um, compared to Dear Angu, of course, Electron gives you uh, the the um, ab ability to maybe quicker write cross-platform code and then run it and all uh, nice and dandy, but it's so much bloated. I mean, it's 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 awful. So I hope that this thing gets used less and less, or at least they fix it. I don't know how they can fix it because the paradigm underneath uh, is uh, is made in a way that it's easier to go bloated, but. Um, Compared to DRAM GUI, DRAM GUI, it's a C++ application. It's whatever you bloat it out with, that's it. There is no additional layers which would add on top of uh, uh, bloated code on top of it. Yes, understood. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Oh. Once again, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, one tiny question. Do you know of anyone who's ever worked on porting IAM GUI to native platforms that interface with native platform APIs for user interfaces instead of uh, rendering manually everything from scratch? I, I don't know anyone who did that, but I think you can do it because it's up to you. Uh, for example, you can do the, the rendering of your main window with whatever native thing you'd like to because you need the native thing. Of course, then you lose the cross-platform compatibility because if you use Objective-C to, to render something, then that can run on Objective-C compiler and, uh, you know, all the, all the platforms which support that. But uh, you can do it if that's, if, if that's, and that's why it's uh, so, uh, so used uh, widely as a tooling layer for, uh, for the apps because it's, you can do whatever you want with your default libraries and your default uh, look and feel and whatnot, and then pop out something to, for, for your game designer, for example, to finalize and to, and to use. Yeah, or, well, because mostly it's a common criticism that when we start rendering UIs from scratch, we throw away a bit of progress from the past several years and we have to re-implement everything. So I was kind of wondering if uh, anyone has ever thought of Porting uh, I am GUI to the na native platform like React Native ported React. Uh, I'm not aware of that. I've seen uh, ability to use uh, Python with uh, DRAM GUI. So there are ports out there, but uh, I can't answer that question, especially with the web-based uh, technologies, Reactor or uh, Angular. All right. Well, thank you very much for the presentation again. Thank you. Okay, again, thank you very much for being here and uh, enjoy the rest, of the, the rest of the fest. I know I'm gonna do it, thank you.